Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Today is Electricity Liberation Day at the Freemer household. I mispronounced my name purposely. Uh, These two gentlemen are here from the left coast, and, and you should introduce yourselves to people. I'm Rex Hungerford. Audio Ultra and King Rex Electric. Okay. And you are? Ed DeVito, Audio Ultra. Okay, so these guys weren't, it's amazing to me, but they read about my electrical problems, my mental problems they didn't read about, and if they had heard those, they probably wouldn't have shown up. But they <laughs> did show up, and they flew all the way in on their own dime to see what my problem was, and they investigated everything, and they uh, tested everything, and came to certain conclusions about what's wrong here. And in, in uh, consultation with Garth Powell from AudioQuest, who's a very helpful guy, uh, they've come up with a solution, and my electrician is here. I didn't wait for my electrician, Firesign Theater style, he's here. And uh, he's, he'll be showing up in a few minutes. So here, here's my electrical issue. Here's my meter. And if you look in there, uh, maybe we, you can see that, there's a, a junction there of, uh, I guess that wire in there is, whatever it is, it's really old. It's like 40 plus years old. And even though my house was built by uh, members of the Kuzma family, it's not the Kuzmas from uh, Kuzma turntables. <laughs> so, but it is a Kuzma, which is, and he says they're probably related somehow. Here's, here's the issue. We put in this Generac generator here to go on whenever the electricity fails. It seemed like a good idea at the time to do that. It's, it's gas powered. And in order to make this work, there is, and these are my, my uh, utility people, Air Group. I'm just giving them a plug. They're really great people. They did, they did a good job. They did everything according to code. And this is the transfer switch. So the electricity comes from the street. And there across the street, there is, you can't see because it's kind of hidden by a tree, is the transformer. Small. And we are on Rockland Electric Power, and uh, they're out of New York State, which is not that far away, but we're at the bottom of their, of their grid. Anyway, electricity comes here, goes to the roof, goes down this mast, which is at least 40 years old, at least, and it goes into the meter. And these are smart meters now. When it senses, when a sensor senses that the electricity is shut off from across the street, uh, it trips a switch and a giant solenoid goes off and boom, switches the electricity over to the generator which starts up and then we have power in the house. In order, and when that happened, the sound of my stereo turned to crap. And I know some people are saying, well, that's just in your mind. Well, I had no expectation of it turning to crap, but it did. And then when I contacted Garth Powell, I said, at AudioQuest, I said, am I crazy? He said, well, yes, you are crazy, but that's not, but you're, what you're hearing is exactly what happens. I get calls like this all the time from people who have either done this, put in this, this uh, generator and a transfer switch, or they've decided to go off the grid by putting solar power on the roof and then there's an inverter that has to turn the DC into AC and that creates these problems which I won't talk about uh, on camera here. But it has to do with grounding. The grounding is all done according to code in order to pass inspection by the town and um, the transfer switch, everything that goes on in there is to code but that is not to audiophile code. And so apparently there's all kinds of noise being generated on the line. And this is in addition to the fact that I have this weird grounding issue here and there's a hum problem here that's just driving me crazy. So these guys who have come here from the West Coast yeah. promise me that this will all go away, that, that everything will be beautiful and wonderful when we're finished. <laughs> it's gonna be significantly better. And, I was, and there's my, there's Craig, there's Craig the Bradley. Guy. He is my electrician. You're Sorry. good to be on camera. I am fine. Very dapper, and uh, Craig will always. I will always be indebted to Craig for uh, introducing me to my young protege writer Malachi Lou, who he heard on the radio here and said, "This kid sounds like you." Yeah. <laughs> and yet, sure enough, he, unfortunately for him, he does. All right. So, what exactly are we going to do, and what are we going to try to accomplish from your perspective? Because you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, to 
the kind of start of it was looking at this original service. It's old. It's degraded. There's wire that's rubbing on the roof of your house. These are just interior. There's old aluminum lines that have corrosion and they break as they go through the meter. They don't make good connections. It leaves from your meter and it goes into a generator panel. And in the generator panel, it's it's getting two supplies from the service, from the house, from the generator here, but you've got junction points inside of here before it goes into the main panel into the house. The main panel in the house came out, of, came out through a, a feeder line. Actually, that's not the feeder. I believe it's this one is the feeder line, right? which feeds over into the audio room. Right. So what you end up with is a whole bunch of connections, dissimilar metal, points where they're making contact. Um, most all of it's done in aluminum wire and aluminum wire just doesn't. And I think one of the most fascinating insights that you had <clears throat> that you told me about and I never thought about it is that most audiophiles begin their search for better electrical service in their house in their room where the AC jacks are. Whereas what you really have to do is start here, out here. As far out as you can get. Yeah. Preferably the transformer. Yeah. Well, preferably, but that's not feasible in many places. But interestingly, if you live in an apartment building, you can't do any of that. So that's a, that creates another big problem, which is why I tell people, try one of those regenerators. If that's all you can do, you'd be amazed at what it might do. You yes. know? Yeah, apartments are a whole different ballgame. Yeah. A whole different ballgame. Yeah. Hey, can you guys uh, blow the moss off my roof while you're up there? Absolutely. <laughs> Clean the gutters. Clean the gutters. <laughs> Looking on a scope at what your waveform is. So, I mean, when I get on here and look at your AFA, it's coming from your utility. You've got about 4.6 harmonic, total harmonic distortion on A. And on B, you've got about the same. That's not bad from what I understand. It's not bad. No. And it's just giving you a baseline reading of what's coming in. Right. What you can do is go in and start turning all the circuit breakers off in your house and see if it drops. And if it happened to drop to say 2.9 or something, then you would one by one go through your circuit breakers and figure where the noise is in your house. And then you go, let's put that on my non-audio phase of my, 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 my panel and kind of keep it away from your audio, then put your audio on the other phase. So you're giving a little less. Right. So we're not doing, I'm not doing that. No, and then you can get into here too and you can just see the waveform, which with that harmonic distortion, you're getting a little ragging at the top and a little ragging at the bottom. Right, and I saw, I saw that on the PS Audio, they have, they have the ability to show you that and yeah. I saw that too. Per this noise, it's it's not bad. So This is the new panel? Yeah, this will be the new outdoor panel. They just make some nice stuff. Really One cool. circuit breaker. The power is off downstairs. The generator is on, so my wife can work. Craig is up there snipping wires. Here's the old wire. It's vintage. Here it is. It's a good job. Passes code. Electrical like a brown rod. That, that's a maintenance item. Every five to seven years, new brown rods. There's, there are splices. There are splices in there. Yeah, and we want those to go away. You can see. Yeah, we don't want splices. No. You want continuous rod. Another splice. You know, it's funny how this works. How you, the more you learn, the more you realize how little you know. It's like I, when I was in Germany uh, at, a, at a show, we went to some somebody's house and they showed us this grounding thing they had for their stereo. And this wire went out of their house all the way into their backyard, all the way to a distant place in the back where they said it was the best place to ground it. And this whole rigmarole, and I remember saying, this guy, what is nuts? <laughs> what does this mean? Because you know, I didn't know. Right. I knew you had, gra had, had grounding. So this guy went to this extra special. It's like that Puritan, whatever that stuff that it could be a Puritan. And but you got to be careful what you do because you want a single point ground. Right. If you put Period. another ground in your yard from your stereo into your yard, and you have one from your service into yeah. your yard, you made two different grounds, and noise is going to be going back. Well, that's and what forth. I had here. That's what I had. Here. Yeah. 
if you had a lightning strike and it hit the earth, it would go back up both grounds to get the utility, and anything in between is going to get a big pulse of EMF, and that could fry all the electronics and solid state devices. We don't want that. Yeah, you don't want that. No, so we don't. won't be hooked up. No, but no. a single point ground, it's, 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 that's the way you want to go all day long. I mean, the contacts are clean. Well, it's pretty new. It should be. Yeah. It's just uh, dirty now. Yeah, it's dirty. Everybody's going to have to wipe that off. done right to your system, you're going to see 20% improvement. Wow. This comes from the house, right. from the cold water pipe out of the house. Right. These were your ground rods. This just tied on and went over to your generator. Right. And from your generator, actually, from there, it went and entered with the other ground wires into your house. So your grounding has all these splices from your cold, from your rods, your cold water, through this, into your generator, from the generator panel, into the house. So that's not a very good grounding scheme. No. Here, here, here's the new the new look at the difference between for your meter. Yeah. I don't know the old this. This is the old one. That's your old meter. Old corroded meter. Yep. So this panel is going to be outside with one certain main breaker. Yeah, and so this is the main for the house, right. the whole house now. And so but that one will be the one inside that we that we turned on and it will be also working. It will work, it will just be a secondary. Right. And so the, the power is going to come into this box. Come in through the top. Through the top. Top or look, copper bus. Copper bus, and then it's going to go into this. There will be a breaker here that will feed your audio. Okay. So direct out. The generator and rest of the house will just continue through and out. The way it was. So you're peeling off your audio right. before it's ever influenced by the rest of the structure. Yes. Let's just cut that corner of the roof off. back of the meter. Just the back of the meter. These blades go inside of the prongs. You don't need anything. For your meter connection. Right. The wire on top came from your roof, came from your supply out of your transformer. Right. And then coming out the bottom is going to go into your house. Right. Right. Okay. And then you're tying your grounds will be separate from this. Now you're going to the ground. I can. I never do that. Your contact here is very it's robust. It's yeah. robust. The wire lays solidly against the whole clamp. Yeah. Okay, now it started raining, because we live in a, in a rain clamp, uh, forest right now. I mean, this is... Us Seattle guys brought the rain. Yeah. Good the... measure. So this part of the job is finished. Two. Oh, there's two of them. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So now you're going to have... You're gonna have... First and then... Sure. So you're going to have 20 feet of copper clad ground rods in your earth. So right now you have two eights, so you have like 16 feet, I think is what he said, eights? Yeah. So you have 16 really feet, now, now you're going to have 40 feet. I'm sorry, you're going to have uh, 20 feet. This is for the whole house or just just for my... The whole house. The whole house. The whole house. Oh. You want to treat the whole house is bonded and grounded together as one unit. Okay. Like, like America used to be, right? Yeah. Here's the film. Going into the gas line with the last one. Now we're going to try something else. Hopefully, not hit a gas line. They're all right now. So here, so here we have the new, a new mast, and of course, Rockland Electric has to come and finish this off. But it's connected up, thank God. And. And this is all copper wire now. Copper wire, not aluminum wire, coming down into the meter. Oh, all these terms, right? The main, okay. Oh, look at that. And it's lacking some breakers. Yeah, it's lacking. Sub feed breakers are going to have one here, and it's going to feed up through there, right. which is going to go to your audio. Right. And then your house is coming out through here, through sub feeds through there, and out. It's going to come out, the electricity is going to come out of there. You can see how it's being routed along here. Then it goes here. And you see it's routed into the house. 
right there, and that's going to go into a sub panel in my utility room that we will show you a little bit later. This is how we're going to bypass. And by the way, like I said to the guys who flew in from Seattle, that said, get your contractor to to do this that did the installation of the of the Generac, and I said to them, this is New Jersey. If I if I call them up and tell them about this, which I did, they're going to say, are you fucking kidding me? And so I did. I called them and I told them what I want them to do. And they said, are you fucking kidding me? So thank God my friend Craig, who, who is a great electrician who has helped me out over the years, is going to do this. That's right. He is not only going to do it, he's doing it. And uh, the hope in all of this is that uh, all of you people living in New Jersey, at the very least, will uh, contact Rex and his company, and they they will work with Craig if you live in New Jersey, sure. and uh, do this kind of work for you, especially if you have one of these generators. But not just that, if you have a 40-year-old mast that's aluminum wire going from here into your 40-year-old box meter box, and it's all corroded, you got to change that because you can do all you want to do from the inside where your AC jacks are in your listening room. You got to start out here, and I've learned that because last night I sat sat and listened, even though it was only partly done, and I heard an, a big difference. No, I didn't double blind test it. I didn't have to. I played records I knew really well, and it was fundamentally different. But more about that later. So now you're going to be twisting pairs of wires. Yeah, I take the we take the the hot and neutral and twist them so that we can keep. It's not like trying to reject noise, but it's more about keeping the inductance and capacitance of the wires consistent. And we tape it every couple feet, so it's got a light twist. And this is the wire that's going into the house, right? Yeah, this now, is your subfeed to your audio. Panel. And this wire came from from uh, standard supply house. Oh, it's supply house. Okay. Yeah. And have you tested the 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 um, directivity of this ground wire? I know that sounds crazy. It's not crazy. Garth Powell is the guy who told us about it yeah. and has the equipment to do it. You don't. We will in 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 short order, yeah. but at the moment we don't. Um, and with stranded wire, it's not going to matter that much. Okay. Because the strands you can't control it inside, right. but the solid core conductor yeah. it would matter. You know what's fascinating? He did a, a a demonstration of this. He he always does demonstrations. He doesn't kid around. He doesn't say things. He demonstrates it. So he did a demonstration to show, and he said, all I'm gonna do is reverse the ground wire. This, this ground wire in this stereo system, in this hotel room, we're gonna play this trumpet track, and I'm gonna reverse that wire. That's all that's being changed. And you see what you hear. It made a ridiculous difference. I'm sorry, it made a stupid difference. And now you're saying, well, in the recording studio, they don't do any of that. And then, 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 then. Fine, they don't do it at the recording studio. But when you get the re stuff at home and you play it at home, why not get it to sound as good as it's going to sound? I'm in this big argument now with these, mas these mastering engineers on Facebook who hate me and write all this terrible stuff and think that I were, I'm in a playground. They are the real workers and I'm in a playground. What's really happening, I, I know what's happening, these, these are not, these are digital mass ventures. What's really happening is record sales are going from 600 million last year to a billion dollars next year and they don't have a cutting lathe and they're freaking out and they're blaming me. It's fantastic. I love it. Your power for your stereo is still going through here into your transfer switch, right? into your main panel, right? all in, there might be some copper, but I think it's mostly aluminum, and then it's not really single point landed and bonded inside your panel, but you got all these connection points. You got connection points in here, you have connection points where it That's lands right. in that panel, and then you've got more connection points as it comes out through your sub feed through aluminum into your panel back there, so all of that is going to be reduced down to one contact down here and a contact in your sub panel for your, you know, where you got to go into your lugs. Right. And it's going to be a significant difference. Yeah. It'll be much, much more. Is that just to protect against panel. water or something? No. It's no. Not. So, so we don't get shocked. Oh. Yeah. So the because metal fish metal, tape doesn't slap into the hot metal, bus. Oh. We don't, <laughs> yes. yeah, we don't want, want that to happen. That's experience that teaches you that when your hands are all burned. <laughs> I guess. Okay. So now we're putting the ground rods in.
this would be. This is the bomb. We can just pull it apart. I just saw that action on you porn last night. Yeah. Sorry. This is a mix of powder, that's the flash stuff. This is a mix of powder and it must be a copper mixed into it because it will literally create a weld between the two of these. It's gonna melt oh. when it goes into here. Oh. We're sure this is the one Whoa. the guy said to fit in here, so that's... That's crazy shit, man. I ain't never seen nothing like that's this. That one. This is the starter material. Is it going to blow up? Yeah. So I, stand, I should stand back? I don't think it's going to be huge, but... There you go. Let's see what's going on here. So there, there's this copper circuit breaker right there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just not the end. Ground wire. This is the ground. This is the ground of the ground rods. But we need to replace this. This is part of the home, but it needs to be reattached. Yeah. With new wire. Seems seems sloppy. The old stuff. Yeah. Not you. Not the new stuff. For God's sake. <laughs> no, the old sake. stuff is if just I really a mess. Yeah. It was sloppy. Wouldn't I wait till you guys leave before I said it yeah. to everybody in the country? Right. But no. Yeah. Technically, it's probably legal. But you got butt splices here. You've got butt splices here outside yeah. the house. You've got corrosion on your wire it's and it somebody looks pretty messy, yeah yeah and that was all corroded no good so we're abandoning all this and we put in a new ground wire out to the new ground rods in the yard so there's one so one's here double a corn oh, so, so, liquid so they, taped and they connect to, they're like it's like a series oh, is in, in series I see. yeah it's a, it's a series of ground wires mm -hmm. and this goes to this one All right, it's day three. We're day three now of, of my install, and uh, the ground rods are buried right down here. The second rod was right here, and then the first rod was further up he right here, I think. Wherever, they're both buried now. And here are the, uh, perpetra the perpetrators. Okay, so you're running. Yeah, that's your harmonics there, your crap. So, so this is Mike wants to see his dirty utility power. Which means you're going to oxidize out and you're going to destroy the aluminum wire usually first. Copper's more noble. That's no good. No, so we're going to correct that and get a copper, I mean aluminum jumper and the right size crimp and then land that. This is your house cold water ground wire. And it goes all the way from the other side your stair where that is. And how do you, how does this, where does this run through? How does this, where does it's this? going through the wall. Oh, and then you'll have to fish it through? No, this is existing, so we're going to tie onto the end of it. Oh, I see. Heat shrink over it to keep the moisture and stuff out of it. But this is, and this, it. And this is uh, aluminum? It's aluminum. And so, but you, and then you say you, aluminum shouldn't go to copper? No, you can't have the two of them together. But, th but then what are you going to do? You're going to put aluminum here? I'm going to finish it off with aluminum. Okay. Add, a, add a seven foot strip or whatever to get down into this thing. So that it's the same metal? Same metal, same size, same gauge, same yeah. metal with a crimp made for aluminum. That's, and that's what we were debating last night. I mean, running the copper back out, but again, it's going to be, it'd be additional cost or whatnot. Whatever. You're, you're already at a good reading right now, so we kind of decided yeah. to basically leave it the way it is. The dissimilar metals, like like it is there, is, is the was the concern. But Rex already has a solution for that, so yeah. we think you're going to be in good shape. Right? Yeah. And then right. worst case, worst case scenario, we can add ground rods. I'm not sure if Rex just said that or not to get your your impedance lower. 
is the idea of it. But um, but honestly, you're you're gonna this is a good shape. It'll yeah. it'll get us to the first place. Then we'll make a decision after that if we want to keep going further. Right. Yeah. Okay. So with, with you're, your cold, you're in much better position. You're with your cold water. You're showing a half of ohm of resistance, and which is really good. When you're putting a chemical ground rod in to some place, they're looking for five ohms. Oh. So you're significantly lower yeah. than that. You're a half ohm. That cold water pipe is doing a very good job. Thank God something's working well here. Yeah. So. Yeah, right. and that with these grounds out here, you know. Yeah. And these will help a lot with a lightning, arresting a lightning, because right. it's because a lightning strike on the utility line would come in, it would pretty easily get into this line and go out and want to shed shed to earth. But that's why we're also putting a surge protector out. We here. may have a chance to test this this afternoon. They're saying it's, it could be very serious weather here this afternoon, including hail and lightning. And so let's just recap the work that was done here to upgrade my electricity. So it started on the roof with a new mast and a new connection to the electricity across the street. And this is probably not the final uh, way this is going to look. Once a rock, uh, once a Rockland Electric comes, they'll probably clean that up a little bit. And then it goes copper wire into a new meter box, all copper wire. And then it goes into this box, which is now our new main box. It's located outside. And um, one breakout goes there, and one breakout goes up here. And this one goes all the way across the side of the house into my utility room. Now, down here, you can see how much cleaner the ground setup is. This was a mess before. It was multiple crimped connections and now it's much cleaner and there's the main ground wire that goes under there and there are two large ground rods in the ground there. And those are the only ones that there are. Okay? Now, we come in here. That's of course Fios. And this is the uh, Generac. This is the transfer switch that determines whether the electricity that goes into the house is from the street or is from the generator over there. That's what was causing my troubles. Well, not all my troubles, but my troubles related to electricity. So, in any case, that's that. That still goes where it did, and that goes into, into my house, into the secondary box that used to be the primary box in the house. And this one goes across here, here, and then into the house. Now we'll go inside and show you the inside. Okay, now we're in the utility room, and there is where that conduit comes into the house. It's right there. Comes around here. Goes over here. And it goes into this sub-panel here. Now I'm going to show you what's inside this sub-panel. Now this sub-panel, as it's set up right now, is actually a single phase connection. So rather than having 240 volts going into here, divided into two phases, uh, the choice was made to bring only a single phase in because that's all I really need for my stereo. However, the inspector doesn't like that. The town inspector came here and did not like that, so we have to modify this and put in the other phase. Even though we won't use it, it's got to be in here. That's just a matter of code. It will not affect the sound of my stereo, fortunately. At any rate, there are two sets of wires, three sets of wires going out of here. So there's one. That goes into my listening space. And that's where it gets plugged in. So there's a separate line for each of the monoblock amplifiers. Each one has its own 20 amp service, which is very cool. And rather than go fishing to install this, we ran conduit above the heater, which is easier 
and it's fine. And I'm quite convinced that whoever buys my house will be an audiophile who wants a room that works great and um, has really good electricity. Now, the other set of AC jacks is behind the equipment rack. You can't see it, but that one's there, and that's fed from another circuit that comes out of here and goes down back there. And then there's a third one. While they were at it, I had them install another line right here. And this allows me to have another, I have another equipment rack in here that I use for reviews for, mostly for Analog Planet. And that's the setup. And that's a uh, surge protector for this system. So the way this system works is there are two 20 amp runs for the amplifiers on the amplifier side. There's two 20 amp runs for the low level signal on the front end of the system. There's a 20 amp here for the home theater upstairs, and the difference this made to the home theater sound was it was amazing how much better it is now that it runs here instead of through the main house. And then there's a 30 amp circuit breaker here for the surge protector. And that's it. And the difference this made to the sound of my stereo is like having a new stereo installed, and I'm not kidding.